recording there, make sure everything's good. <coughs> if I am coughing, it's because I'm not ill, but just getting over being ill. I'm aware the game is um, frozen at this moment in time. It will not be very soon. Um, give me one second just to get the chat up. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd just go over a little bit of the of, of the channel stuff since um, you know, for uh, most of you uh, aren't interested or I have got no viewers or whatever. But for anyone who is interested, yeah, I am getting back into streaming again. I doubt I'll be recording stuff for YouTube, but I'll definitely be streaming a lot, lot more. Um, that's because I think it'll be cool. And I'm listening to myself. I've got the chat on my phone. Uh, so, let's go back into the room. I thought it'd be cool, because I love history, to go over the Total War games and what I like about them what I don't like about them. Um, I thought it would be especially cool to start off with Rome, uh, since I uh, studied this period, this time period, in university. Uh, I have a degree in uh, classics and ancient history, mainly in ancient history, and my dissertation actually specialised on ancient Roman warfare and Caesar's Gallic Wars. So, um, In fact, it very nearly cost me a bloody 2-1, so there, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it obviously wasn't that good, because uh, I remember my, my marks in third year were really good. And my, my, my one of my worst marks is my dissertation, which was like, ugh. Uh, that was mainly because it was a grind to write it. You try writing 10,000 words on a man who, so, who talked solely about himself. And yeah, you'll you'll soon regret that choice. So, um, <clears throat> but Julius Caesar is one of my favourite you know uh, people from military history, so don't get me wrong. So this is Rome 2 Total War. Now, Rome 2 Total War is a game that uh, pretty much defined my first year at university. Um, I'd always loved the ancient world. I'd loved Rome 1. Uh, I'd played it for hundreds upon hundreds of hours, Rome 1. Um, and yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, but when Rome 2 came out, you know, I, me and Steady, who's a, uh, a curator on our channel, who's a, is a content creator on our channel, um, we were in university together and we were pumped for this game. He did engineering, he didn't do uh, ancient history, but he wished he did. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, we were just pumped for this game coming out. And when it did come out, it was an absolute flop. It was an embarrassment, it was broken on release. It didn't work. It was an absolute fucking nightmare. Um, but, but, we're five years on now and we are in build 2.2.0. And we have modded the game extensively. Um, if anyone is interested in what mods I am using, I will put a list up in the video description if I put this on YouTube. If. I might do. I probably will, actually. Um, yeah, so we... Uh, a, a description of the mods. We are running a 12 turns a year mod. I always thought it was very stupid that it took armies uh, a year or so to get from the top of Italy to the bottom of Italy. Didn't work like that in real life, as you probably know. Uh, you know, a, a legion can march to the toe to the upper, you know, Cisalpine region of Italy in a week, maybe less. Um, a lot less, actually, if they're using the roads. So, yeah, that's a load of rubbish. So, we have a turn per year. Uh, sorry, a turn per month now. Um, and it also means that all of the generals that you see in the game, they level up to be near Alexander the Great standard of amazing if they keep winning battles. Um, and t taking on that role will be, uh, we are continuing a campaign here, but it's literally, it's just, I literally just uh, have done one thing, and that was adopt one person into my family, because I really like his name. Um, and that's it, and I saved it and came out. So we're, we're, we're right in the, the start of turn one with the Romans, we're going with the Cornelii, I think. Uh, simply because I like being the villains, and Cornelii are really snobby. And <laughs> I don't really like anyone else. Uh, the Cornelii... Uh, well, we'll, we'll get into history talk when we get into the actual game. Uh, but yeah, this is Rome 2 Total War. And uh, finally, 
It is an amazing game. Finally, after five years of patching and tweaks and mods, it's finally where it should have been when it came out. So, uh, everything is turned up to top. Should be. Let's see. Um, advanced options. Yes, everything's turned up to top. Good. Excellent. Right. Okay. Let's go. Gotta say, not a huge fan of Augustus. Pretty much a glory hogger. He never actually did any of his fighting himself. Left it to his generals and then took all the glory. Took all the credit. As a military historian, yeah, Augustus isn't very high on my list of cool people to follow throughout history, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, Ro Rome is interesting and Augustus is interesting. But, uh, yeah, he, he, yeah. He's a coward, from what I've read of him. Uh, <coughs> amazing politician, fantastic politician, and fantastic psychologist, but uh, not a very good general. Or leader, really, actually. Oh, Sam's hosting me. How nice. Thank you, Sam. Picture is Hannibal leading his elephants over the Alps, I think. So, uh, Rome to total war. This is Italy. This is Italy as Rome to total war would have you believe it is. Um, kind of correct, um, has to be said. Yeah, we had Neapolis there, uh, fishing village, fishing, fishing city. Um, so, first thing. Yes, we're going to look at our go away. Uh, we are going to look at our family. So the House of Cornelia uh, is who we are. Uh, they're very snobby, very arrogant, very nasty set of people. Um, they represent old Rome, basically the old, the old, um, the old families. Uh, Cornelius Sulla was from this family. Uh, Sulla was a uh, ballsy politician and fantastic general. Um, he smashed Mithridates twice in Greece. Uh, Mithridates was a, an incredible general in, in his own right, and Sulla beat his worn ass like a big blonde drum. Uh, he went over there, did it twice. He was outmaneuvered by Gaius Marius, actually, in Rome, because um, they those two guys hated each other, and he was actually exiled, uh, kind of. Uh, the second time, he was more or less exiled into a general ship that he didn't want. He didn't really want to go and um, take on Mithridates, but he was made to do it, and he beat Mithridates, came back and took Rome. He just marched on Rome and took it. Uh, by this stage, Gaius Marius was pretty much an old man and uh, died uh, pretty much in, in, in per well, I think he just died quite quietly, actually. I don't, he might have been murdered, I can't remember. Um, but interesting fact, interesting fact, we're told by Tacitus, actually, uh, that a young Gaius Julius Caesar, who was the nephew of Gaius Marius, uh, was brought before Sulla, and because Sulla was killing off all of uh, all of Gaius Marius's allies in Rome uh, when he was victorious, and he was asked what he wanted to do with Gaius Julius Caesar, and he looked at this man was quite well, this young lad, pretty much 16, 17, and thought, no, it seems like a seems like a you know a, a, an arrogant whelp of a lad, uh, very, very, very proud, won't bow down to me, so he just exiled him, didn't kill him. Uh, he turned to an aide, did Sulla, at one stage, after the proceedings, when he'd exiled Caesar, and said that he might regret doing that, because he sees, m and I quote, many, many Mariuses in Caesar. And that would, of course, go on to be correct, because Caesar would be one of the last, well, in fact, the last Republican general to march on Rome. Um... 
to basically start, uh, finish what Sulla and Gaius Marius started in taking his army, marching on Rome, and taking over the state, which he did. Um, he was named, obviously, a dictator for life, and then was murdered, murdered on the Ides of March later. And after that, Augustus, who, who he adopted as his son, he wasn't actually a son, he was a great nephew, but you never know, um, went on to become the first emperor of Rome. Uh, because the people were now acclimatized to one man rule. Uh, because they've had so many people come back to try and take their city by force that they'd said, well, fuck it, we may as well just have a king now. And they did. <laughs> so there we go. A uh, little bit of history bit there. And this man here, Sporius Norbanus Canis. I love the name because it rolls off the tongue and it just sounds silly. Um, so yeah, he's only 16. So he's got a long, long, long road ahead of him. This will be my avatar and yours for the rest of the campaign. So, yeah, he will be a man. And, uh, yes, thank you, Michael Lom. That's cool. Uh, so, there we go. Uh, his ambition is one, which is good, which means he won't be tempted to betray us later on when the empire gets too big and everyone starts turning against each other. His gravitas represents how, how legendary he is, how known he is. And uh, these are his general traits up here. His authority is quite low because he's not won any battles yet. His cunning's average and his zeal is really, really high already. So he's a patriot. He, he firmly believes in what he's doing. Um, his traits in his household, this is what he has around him. So he has a domestic goddess who, who is probably why he has, he has such high zeal. He would have had a zeal of five. Now he has a zeal of seven because his wife likes cream, apparently. Okay, whatever. Um, this man is easy to annoy, he's choleric, and he's very easy to anger and enrage, and he remembers his enemies, so he's got plus two zeal, ah, so there we are, he would have had three zeal, but now he has seven zeal, because he gets two from here and two from here, look at that, cool, and he has plus one gravitas per turn, which is really powerful, um, what else he has in skills? Um, he's very modest, okay, yeah, he's very modest. Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah, nice, nice guy. Seems like a really good protagonist for our story. And the rest of them are very much the same. They all have different things, different traits. I'm not going to focus on them, because these are all tools, honestly. These guys here, they're just going to be a pain in our backsides all the way through, because our family is the one that matters. Fuck them. One thing that they should have done, um, uh, Creative Assembly, is they should have ported over what we did in the first game. The first game there were three Roman families and there were actually three different factions on the map and you'd conquer in different directions for Rome and try and outdo each other and eventually you'd fight each other in a massive civil war which is kind of what happened in actual Rome so it mirrored it quite well and you actually felt like a Roman general going out there and taking land for the Empire of the Republic sorry. Nowadays you control Rome basically you are Rome's leader um, unofficially. There's still a Senate and all these people are generally technically your peers. But you're telling them where to go and what to do. So, yeah. Um, this isn't a mod, Michael. This is a um, the normal game with a few mods on it. And I will put in the description uh, a bit later on of this video what mods I have on. <coughs> I have one mod, which is called Guaranteed Major Faction Empires. Which means all of the main empires in the game are guaranteed, guaranteed to be there. So Egypt will be there, for instance, when I finally get there. Because one of the main problems in the original Rome 2 Total War is that all of the main factions that you actually want to fight would be killed by fucking the Nervii and the Bogdii and the fucking twat face tribe of nowhere. And so you'd get there, and instead of fighting the Egyptians in a really cool epic battle between Romans and Egyptians, uh, uh, Greco-Egyptians, or a really cool battle between Romans and Spartans, or Romans and Greeks, and Romans and Carthaginians. No, 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 no. You'd be fighting Romans against fucking random Nubian tribe too. That doesn't happen in this game now, because I've installed a mod that makes sure that all of these big juicy factions get lots of land, so we get to actually have big epic wars with them. So that's cool. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have a 12 turns per year mod, which makes all of our generals age realistically uh, and become woefully overpowered later on in the game but the same goes for the AI as well they will also have Alexander the Great like generals later on in the game which will make it more awesome 
Um, and I have different uh, character these basically portraits little tiny things like that I've got better particle effects better better I've got better textures modded into the game and that's it uh, first turn all we've done is we've given our main man here Spurius Norbanus Canis the first legion primogenia uh, which is my favorite name for a legion because it was an actual legion it's one of Julius Caesar's legions actually um, well it was one of Gaius Marius's legions and it was one of Julius Caesar's legions Okay, so he's going to be our main force. We're going to we're going to we're going to sharpen his teeth on the on the Etruscans who are up here. Now the Etruscans, interestingly enough, used to own most of Italy, or at least most of the heartland of Rome around here. But the Etruscan kings were actually kicked out by um, a Brutus, a Brutii, uh, literally the first Brutus, Lu Lucius Junius Brutus, or um, not Lucius Junius Brutus. I can't remember what his name was, but it was a Brutus. Uh, who led the Republic, or the Republicans, in kicking out the uh, Tarquinius, who was the last Roman king, the last king of Rome. He was an Etruscan king, and they exiled him, kicked him out. And they formed the Republic. And the Republic has been slowly eating up ground and its allies ever since. Now it's got most of southern Italy, and we're about to go and kick the kings in the arse once again. So, and we're the man who's going to do that, Sporius Norbanus Canus. So, uh, everything else has pretty much been taken care of. Our fleet is on its way to Egypt because we want to get a, a, a treaty with them because we want some of their grain. Thank you very much. Uh, we want some of their papyrus and their grain. Everyone else is just holding ground. We're just going to start building up southern Italy. Our lovely spy here is going to go straight north so I can see what's going on with these bloody Etruscans. And silent. A shadow among. There we go, in you go, there's an army there. Just, just standing around, not doing very much. And that's all I'm going to do. Isn't it? Yeah, that's all I'm going to do. That's turn one. So, one of the other things with this game when it first came out is this part right here, the time in between, um, in between turns, took like 15 minutes. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. It took 15 minutes. To go through all of these factions now. Look how quickly, the, look how quick this is. Bang, done. And I, yeah. So you can't tell me this game wasn't broken on release when it took 15 minutes, and that takes what? 30 seconds. Ooh, she, no, my spy has a pet snake. Very nice, very nice. We've encountered Liguria, who are one of the yeah, they, they, they're they're one of the tribes of the uh, Cisalpine region. Uh, those guys are going to have to be squashed very, very, very quickly after the Etruscans. They're, they're my next target after the Etruscans. But well, we've got a, a big army now with uh, the Primogenia Legion. They are going to march north and take Velathri. Uh, there's no one here. I'm going to auto-resolve this. There is absolutely no one here. So, yeah, we may as well auto-resolve it. Be aggressive. I will fight battles, um, as many as I can, because I love it. Um, just occupy. We hunger for battle. One clever thing about the game, which is a clever thing about all Total War games, they have different cultures. Uh, the one thing we don't have to worry about, because so so if I'm a Roman legion and I attack a uh, Carthage, for instance, if I take that city, it's actually a different culture. So it takes me a lot, lot longer to bring it to heal and make them stop being pissed off the fact that I've conquered them, basically. Um, doesn't have an in Italy though, because they're Latin culture anyway, because they're all, you know, in Italy. Um, these guys aren't happy that I conquer them, but that'll last for a single turn. Well, that's for any longer than that. And we will get some food on the go there. And we'll take our army. And we'll, we'll just leave it there for now, actually. And we'll take our spy. And we'll see if there's any more armies over here for us to be wary of. Doesn't seem like there is. So that, pretty much, is the Etruscans dealt with. <laughs> um, they don't put up much of a fight, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, they really don't. And uh, it's not really worth doing the battles with them, because we're just going to steamroll them anyway. So there we go. Oh, Sporius Nobanus Canis has leveled up. There we go. And he nearly died in that battle, so I'll have to be bloody careful with him. Um, 
So, we are going to go for Skill Tactician. And we are going to make him a Commander of Men. So, they are very much like role-playing characters. They level up and they get different traits that make them do different things in the battlefield. He, I want him to be a leader. Because the rally ability in this game is bloody powerful. So, yeah, that's what we want to do. We have the second legion, Italica, which is in Rome, which is uh, commanded by Lucius Julius Libo, or Libo. And we have Legio III Antiqua, which is led by Aeneas Cornelius Scipio in Cosentia, uh, southern Italy. And they will hold down Italy while Sporus Nobanus Canus sharpens his teeth on all of these enemies that are surrounding Rome right now. Oh, and we're, uh, yeah. There we go. See our ship there on its way to Egypt. I am going to turn up the music, because I quite like the music in this game. This music is actually from Rome 1 Total War. Uh, I modded it in, so there we go. Now, if you want me to shut up about history and stuff, feel free to tell me to shut up about history and stuff. Uh, but I find it really bloody interesting. And I like talking about it. Uh, because you should talk about it, because it's cool. And that's actually all we're going to do this turn, apart from... Our supply reforms, we only have manipulative organization. Because as Rome, you wanna make your bloody legions better. You want to make your legions better. So there we go. We will be playing other Total War games as well um, in the coming months. So, you know, we will be doing. I've got a full series planned for Medieval 2, um, which will be pretty soon. We're going to be playing Kingdoms first as a little prologue to our main campaign in Medieval 2 Total War. At your command. So, yeah. Let's kill them. Bye. At your command. <clears throat> That's fine, Shrek, you lovely man. You you do what you want to do. Um so the whole army is has leveled up now. Which something else that happens in Total War, Rome 2 Total War, especially, was one of the first um was one of the first games that did it. And I'm going to make Primogenia, which is Sporus Nobanus Canis' legion, into a vanguard legion. Which basically means they're conquerors. They go forward, they've got bigger uh, movement range in the battle on the map, and they, are, and they get uh, plus 3% melee attack, which is really, really good. You could make them into a garrison auxiliar for being really good defenders, or engineers, who are really good at taking down walls and things like that. Now, what I really love about these is that they're actually themed for the army, so... A Roman legion, these were their specialties. You know, certain legions were better. Most of Caesar's legions were vanguard legions. They were amazing at uh, covering a lot of ground very, very quickly and getting into grips with the enemy. He had other legions as well. You know, engineer type legions and garrison legions. You know, people who, who had different... You know, there was auxiliar legions as well who were basically uh, legions that were pooled from places like Africa and Spain and the Middle East. 
and places like that. Um, but yeah, I'm making these a Vanguard Legion because they are our main Legion, and they are going to have a plus another plus three percent uh, in formidable fighters, which makes them even better at smashing people to bits. There we go. It's basically an army of Roman orcs. So, go figure. When in doubt, Roman orcs. That's all I'm saying. Um, we want... Some food? Yeah. No. No, we don't want that. We want... Yeah, some of that. Some of that. Yeah, good, good. We have grain pits, because they don't give us any minus to uh, our squalor. Because these two here are pretty good, but one's full of cows and the other one's full of irrigation. Squalor. But grain pits, you lob a load of grain in a hole. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. That's fine. And... Uh, yeah, everywhere's fine for now. We're going to let Sporus Nabanus Canis relax for a bit, because he's, he's a he's mental case. And obviously he likes throwing his bodyguard into battle. Because everyone else has not been seen battle yet, but only these three units have. So it's basically been him charging into everyone. So we might want to just you know, come back on that a little bit. At your service. We're going to upgrade our spy to have... Do you know what? She's going to do that because eventually she's going to accompany our general over here. But for now, she's going to come up here Swift and, silent. and just keep an eye on the tribes of the Cisalpine region. The Cisalpine Gauls, as they were called back in the day. Um, one of the things I studied in my dissertation uh, was the fact that you know, a lot of people dismiss Gauls as simply Gauls. I mean, the Romans did. To the Romans... These were called Cisalpine Gauls. But if you look at here, this actually game's been actually quite well researched because look, one called the Veneti, one called the Incerbres, and one called Ligurians. But no, Romans would just say, no, Cisalpine Gauls. And then Gauls. And then more Gauls. And then, in England, Celts. That's it. That's what they thought. <laughs> so. And, and the, the one of the real tragedies of history is that we only really hear of the ancient world through the mouths of the Romans or the Greeks. We, we, we have next to no, actually we have no sources, no known sources, written sources or otherwise, of the Gauls, of the Celts, of, of these myriad different tribes. I mean, look how many different tribes there are up here. I mean, we don't hear from any of them because Gaul was conquered by the Ro by Romans and that was it we, we never heard anything from them and there is a reason why if you go to if you go to a backwater city like Liverpool in England right and I'm from Liverpool so you know I can slag it off as much as I want if you go to a backwater city like that you still see Roman buildings like this see the shape here you still see Roman buildings just like that in our libraries and our town halls they are just like that columns Square, uh, triangle arch on top of it. Columns, triangle arch, columns, triangle arch. All the way through it. In bloody Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Anyway, I'll stop gushing about history and I'll carry on with the game, shall I? Oh, oh, no, we've got an edict to proclaim. Bread and games! Bread and games! Come on. Let's have some bread and let's have some games. Have some bread and have some games. We have fine goods, and you doubtless have much that we would find desirable. So, are we to have trade? Well, this is interesting. Um, normally, they don't want to trade with me this early, but yeah, fine. Talk can be tasteless, but when we have agreement, it makes wine sweeter and gives meat savour. Do they even have any lands, actually? Our merchants seek prosperity in your lands. Yours could do the same in ours. Will you agree to this? I will. I will, but normally, 
I'm a bit... I don't trust you Greeks, right? Now, if you're Greek and you're watching this in real life, I've got nothing against you. But according to this game, your ancestors were fucking twats. Because they keep turning on me in these games. But I will accept this, because you're going to pay me for a training game, and that's fine. By the Tetractis, you have a good mind in your skull. Your decision here is most excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. More stabbing, less talking. Manipular organization. Yes. Bread and games, everyone. Bread and games. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. So, tactics. Physical conditioning. Get those legionaries running around. Get them fucking fighting fit. Want to see abs. Want to see oil. Ooh, no, actually. No. No, 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 no forget about that. Just, just, get, just get fit and ready to fight. Um... So it's going to take six turns. Then again, six turns normally in the game would mean he would be, his horses would be there um, for three years to replenish. Which is rubbish because we're in Italy. Do you know what I mean? Let's go down to the horse trader down the road. Go see fucking Titus, the horse trader. He'll sort you out. You know? Team on the horse tree, horse dew. He'll sort you out. You know, six turns, couple of months. Yeah, okay. I, I can deal with that. That's fine. Um, but, we do have this place over here that we kind of need to knock out. Well, they're just going to keep sending armies over to us, which is annoying. Um, so, yeah. I'll probably do that. Probably do that, to be honest. You know. Just fuck the Etruscans. Now look at this, the Gauls. Sorry, not the Gauls, these tribes. And the Gurians. The Inserbes. The creating men. Well, I don't trust people who start creating men on my borders. Yeah. That's what Alexander said. I don't trust them blokes who start creating dudes on my borders. Fuck them. Fuck them, I say. If you're Greek and they're little boys, you do actually fuck them. <gasps> well, no, yeah, you, you, yeah, that's what they did. So you know, anybody who disputes that, right? Go and read a man called Xenophon, because <coughs> Xenophon is where we actually get the word Xeno from, or xenophobia. Uh, Xenophon was a Greek, um, a Greek Athenian. Oh, he's from Corinth. He's from one of the northern cities. Not, well, not northern, but you know what I mean. Cities around here. Um, and he went to Sparta to live. And because the Spartans were so distrusting of people outside, um, Xenophon actually became a word for outsider. Or someone who's outside, or living in plain sight, but has actually nothing to do with you. Uh, so that's where Xeno comes from, or, Zeno, or Xenos, if you collect Warhammer 40,000. Um, and he wrote at length about the Greeks, and about his own people and the Spartans, uh, who would fall in love with little boys quite a lot, all of the time. They'd fall in love with little boys and, you know, take them ma in a manly fashion. If you watch Firefly, similar to that. And, yeah, the Spartans were so good at taking little boys that they would pair older and younger men together uh, when they're training uh, to basically form a bond. And that bond was professional, it was personal, and, quite a lot of the time, it was sexual as well. So there you go. So when you, and you, when you next time you watch 300, and Gerard Butler says, Oh, boy lovers, more! You can sit there and actually think, No, actually, mate, you're a boy lover. You're a bum boy. You are, the, you are one of the first lovely bum boys. So shut the fuck up and stop being a prick. Sorry, that movie gets to me. I have talked to the wise woman, and all speak of a treaty. And our elders see greatness in you. Did people really talk to the Romans in this way? No wonder they were fucking 
xenophobic asshole. Alright, yeah, fine, yeah, fine. <coughs> Tell the iron strength of the sword within your heart to speak such wise words. Excellent. Nice. So we've met the Egyptians. They will not want to treat you this early in the game, fortunately. Well, let's go see the Seleucids, see if they want to treat you. The Egyptians in this game are such assholes. Uh, you'll see why in a moment. This is the diplomacy screen. Let's go talk to Egypt, shall we? Your embassy is most welcome. I listen most carefully as the servant of Pharaoh, Lord of the Two Houses. Okay, how about trade? Pharaoh, judge of all, is not inclined to allow your merchants into his lands. Okay. How about non aggression pact? I, the humble servant of Divine Pharaoh, the shield of Egypt, thank you for this agreement. No, oh, actually not being too bad. What trade agreement now? Egyptians do not need to be troubled by foreigners and their goods. So speaks Pharaoh, mightiest of the mighty. What a dick. So we're just letting the money pour in from Italy at the moment. <clears throat> oh, where are they going? Did I just see a fleet sneaking north there? Is that what I just saw? Gaius Numerius Lepidus. It's always a bloody Lepidus, isn't it? Always a bloody Lepidus. Every single time. I swear to God, right? Lepidus in real life. Fucking useless. Absolutely fucking useless. I'll explain why in a minute. Well, essentially, when the, when the third triumvirate happened, between him, Mark Antony, and Augustus, or Octavian as he was back then, yeah, he was just dismissed. Just dismissed. He, you know, Octavian was given... All of the West, and Antony was given all of the East and the Grain and Cleopatra's Fanny and everything. And um, Augustus had all of the West and all of the gold, all of the things in Spain, all of the nice people in Gaul and the farmlands. And what was Lepidus given? Africa, but not Carthage. No, 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 no. He was denied. He wasn't given the only actual profitable city in Africa. No, no, no. He was given this vast fucking wasteland down here. Uh, nothing to do with. Absolutely fuck all there, and that's what he was given, and yeah. So yeah, Lepidus, weakest, chinless man I've ever heard of in my entire life. And if we ever play, funny enough, if we ever play the campaign that lets us play as Lepidus in the Triumvirate, we play as Lepidus. Because I, I like to turn the tables in history. Let's see what one of my fit people is doing. Go away. What is Lepidus doing? A member of your family has been captured by pirates. Fucking, yeah. Okay, thanks Lepidus. Yeah, cool. The sea scum are offering to return the boy in exchange for a substantial ransom. Um, pay the ransom. Mm. I think they're going to kill him anyway. How much are they going to be wanting me to pay? They should tell me. But we'll pay the ransom. Why not? And, uh, yeah. Steady as we go. Okay, so we need more money. So let's get let's get some more mines going. And let's get some Get a harbour going. And we will get a shrine to because one of these yeah that one doesn't produce any squalor. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Right. Oh, Salamis is taken by the, uh... Are they this... 
Cyrene or something? I think that's Cyrene. Can't really remember. Ah, they're just called Cyprus, okay. Cool. I'll be going to Cyprus next week, funny enough. Cool. Physical conditioning. They all have pecs now. On receiving the ransom, the parents made preparations to return the boy to his loving family. Oh, that's, that's nice. Okay. Well, Le Lepidus, when you grow up and you're useless, you know. There we go. There's Antioch. There's Tarsus. Antioch was known for having some of the largest walls and in antiquity. But it just it, it was one of those cities that didn't really have a famous last stand like Constantinople did. It just sort of ebbed away. It just sort of disappeared. It, it, you know, it just fell out of relevance, unfortunately. In late, much later years, we encountered the Seleucids. We encountered Cappadocia. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, beautiful. Okay, so we'll go for training reforms. There we go. More training for me men's. Get me men's. Get, get the packs ready. All them packs. We, we, we're going on land. In fact, fucking go now. There we go. <coughs> Sorry. I'm coughing down the microphone there. So, let's try. See if the Greeks Welcome. will trade with us. I throw open the doors to you. I think trade a bad idea. We do not want simple folk to be scared of the marketplace. Okay. And what Cyprus you on trade? Be welcome. But may Athena I accept. We have an agreement. And I'm sure I have some decent Cyprian wine around here somewhere. No, you're alright, man. I'll I'll go back to Rome. Thanks. Oh, Rhodes. Rhodes is here. Oh, nice, nice. Welcome. I throw open the doors to you and bid you enjoy our talks. <laughs> Excellent. We accept. <coughs> and I give thanks to Athena for granting us all wisdom. Creed. No, we don't want to trade with you because we're going to invade you in a minute. We don't trade with you either. Egypt, you want to trade? Be at ease, good emissary. Nope. Slaysids? No, Slaysids don't like us, look at that. Well, fuck you then. Greeting. No, fuck you. Fuck you. You've upset me now. Oh, my spy is leveled up. How can I be of assistance? Make her into an assassin type character, why not? Why not? Why not? <coughs> Alright. So. Uh oh. Oh no. So I actually think we might be alright. If we're not, we'll reload it. It's fine. But we don't want this guy to die. That's a thing. Battle of Corsica. I think we can turn this around. I honestly think we can turn this around. Unless they have tons of missile calf, which I don't think they will do. I mean, this will be all Italian infantry, because that's all I can afford. If it's not all Italian infantry, then I'd like to know why, because they've only got one bloody city. How are they making all of these men? Well, let's see. It should be bog-standard units that, even though they outnumber us, we should be able to turn back here, I think. Thank you. 
Oh oh. Stop the battle there. Okay, so. We have men coming down from up there. So we get our starty up here. We're going to have men coming down from here, so we get our starty over here. Facing the wrong way, dudes. But you know, it's fine. These guys can go here. These guys can go. Yeah, this is going to be quite tight, you know. <laughs> That's what she said. But now this is going to be like quite difficult, I think. Um, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how this goes. That's how we're going to set up, if you can see. So we got men facing in uh, this kind of direction. We've got men facing that direction. Just to take charges and see. And we've got a general right in the middle of it. So, you know, no one can get to him. Charge it coming in here. Wow, they're all coming up there, okay. They're losing. Good. They're losing across the field. Yep, yeah, Roman Roman soldiery is winning out at the moment. Let's try and scare them. Combat's even across the board. In fact, they're losing the, the enemy, so that's good. Now, charge into the back of these fucking peasants here. That's it. Get in there. Fucking have it. Fight them off. Fucking hell. Alright, what's going on here? Why are they charging forward? This unit's... Hello, Frag. Ferg, sorry. Enemy. 
Got them and wavering as well. Get in there, get out of formation and fucking kill them. Fucking kill oh shit, get out there. Get out there, general, get out there, get out there, get out there. Back, come up here, come up here, come up here. Good, made them break, made them break. Now you guys, turn around down here, down here, down here, down here. Go, 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 go. Go. You guys. Fire into them. Yeah, we got him, we got him, I think. We got him. I think it's going well. Fighting uphill. The Romans are fucking doing it. They're doing it. I tell ya. Fucking murder the cons. Murder them. Get in there. They're fucking doing it. I tell ya. Get you some close ups. Oh, look at this in the center. Brave Romans to a man, Millet Cavalry. The Riders and Bugs. This guy still won't run away. Well, they're doing well. I'll give them that. I'll give them that. They're not running away. I don't run into spearmen. Fuck off. Yeah, fuck off. I didn't tell you to do that. Jesus. Oh, they're broken. Yeah, my men are broken there. That's not good. That is not good. Good. Kill them all. Kill them all. Enemy general's dead. I think we got it now. I think we got it. I think we got it. Yeah, yeah, I think we got it. Oh, how did we do that? <laughs> That looked pretty hairy there for a while. I'm telling you now. That looked pretty scary there for a bit. But the lads pulled it out. They pulled it out. That was Romans fighting uphill, ladies and gentlemen. Just uh, zero fucks given there. Let's ride with the general as he cuts down fleeing troops. Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Teach you from bushing. Now, funnily enough, the, the armor that the general's unit is wearing uh, didn't actually come into being use, used for another couple of hundred years. That's because one of the mods I have has introduced you new units to the game, more historically accurate units. But the thing is, it hasn't really. <laughs> hasn't really done it in a, uh, shall we say, historically accurate way for timing. Um, but this is the only unit that we can get at the moment that is dressed like this, basically. And that's because it's a general's unit. All the rest of them are bog-standard Republican troops. Not not post-Marian troops, which is what these guys are. Because that's what Gaius Marius was famous for, was that his reforms of the army. In the Roman army you used to have to own land to be a soldier. Basically you have to be a noble to be a soldier or, or a landowner, a citizen. And you used to have to pay for your own equipment. Whereas Garius Marius changed all that. He paid his troops. He outfitted his own troops. And so he had a private army at his beck and call that he could go and do what he wanted with basically. Which started the age of generals marching on Rome. Well not started, it happened before but 
That was the first truly famous one, was Marius. Flee, flee for your lives. Tuscan dogs. You'll be sneaky with me, did you? Look at this dude fighting back. Oh, oh, no, no, flattened. He's flattened, no mind. Okay, kill him. That'll do anyway, that will do, I think. Let's see the dead on the floor. Yeah. It was a hard fought battle, that one. Um, I have to admit. They caught me on the hop there, that was my fault. Um, I decided to get on land instead of being uh, at sea, and they caught me. But Roman armour and Roman discipline pulled me out of a hole there. Which, you know what, I think it did to a lot of famous generals, including Julius Caesar. He was caught on the hop well in Greece, well before Fastness by Pompey, um, when he was fighting against all the Roman troops. They, they nearly smashed him to pieces. Um, in fact, they should have smashed him to pieces. Enslave the captives, and we'll go and beat them next time. Oh, General's leveled up. We're going to have a relentless attacker. And we're going to have it twice. Because I want my army to be a bloody good at attacking people. And let's go smash these to bits now. Oh, now look at this. Look at this. Yeah, there's hardly any men left. But we'll, we'll, we'll do it on the battle map just to make sure that my general doesn't die. It is Ferg Triple Eight, isn't it? That's what it looks like, anyway. <coughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll deploy in the dry. That's fine. Okay, we'll keep these guys out of the fight because they're basically dead. They took the brunt of the fighting in the ambush. It seems like. So we'll take these guys out of the fight. Let's whack him over here. We have a general in the middle. And we'll have our velites up here. And we'll have these guys in a formation, a locked formation. Let's run, let's go, let's kill them, let's kill them, let's kill them all. Which is not the actual quote from antiquity. Let's go, let's go, let's kill them, let's just kill them all. It's not, I completely made that up, but you know, it's fine. One thing I love about this game is the cinematic, look at this. I love how they love how they actually talk to each other. General, quickly now. Just chase these guys into the fucking into the pits. I'm thinking we can catch one army on the hop.
his cavalry is certainly is uh, running up to uh, do something. I don't know what it's doing. If it goes from a general, I'm going to easily intercept it. There we go, it's going from a Velites, that's fine. Gonna pause it whilst I do some orders here. Do you know what? No. You guys. Just come here. And you guys. Attack these depleted units. Okay. Okay, so everyone's combat even at the moment. This unit's losing, which is good. Now, if he was being smart, he'd take these and he'd swing them around and get me in the flanks. That would cause me a lot of fucking problems, but he's not for now, which is good. Oh, no. Fucking spoken too soon. Look at that. Breaking though. Again, the, the the sheer toughness of Roman early units against people like this just wins you out every time. It just wins you out. There's nothing they can do about it. There's literally nothing they can do. Romans advancing, getting down there. For the Eternal City. Smash in here. Bang. Recycle out again. Should easily have this now. For the gods. Let's mob. This unit's winning slightly, look at that. Okay, let's come over here and do this thing. Romans, ready for duty! Victoria, lead us! Swift melee cavalry! Not giving up these boys. Give them that. Give them that. Legionary cavalry. 
We will do in a minute though. to break these now. General's dead. Look at this. Surrounded on all sides. And finally, the break. That's the end of that. And with that, the Etruscans finally fall. Very brave battles won by uh, fought by them. Very, very, very brave. And the first one nearly got me. And the second one was, uh, yeah, you know. I mean, the AI isn't great, but it did recognise the flanking opportunity eventually. After, ironically, that the second after I said there's a flanking opportunity, there's, uh, they end up doing it. Do that. He's going to go into a city, so we are going to go and take the city. There we go. And the Etruscans are no more. Well, actually they are, because they've got um, a fleet here, but they all just go away, because they don't have any uh, places to be now. Um, so we are a Roman, and yes, we're going to have some grain pits in there. We'll have a civil... We'll have a market settlement, because you're on island, so why not? Um, that is it for this turn, I think. For the sake of friendship that has been, and... Athenians still don't want to trade with us, well, fuck you. Now, if I was playing against a human opponent, and they could see what I was doing in Italy, what I'd just done, where my armies were, if I was one of those those tribes in the Cisalpines, I would attack with everything I have right now. Warfare is always about judging... My people are proud when you can fight from a position of strength and getting those optimal points in. So that when you finally do go to war, you're doing it at exactly the right time that you should be. Um, we are winter now. So just like real... Um, just like real uh, Romans, we are going to winter for the evening and settle down in Alalia and make sure that we are you know, good to go. We've had a good few hours in, on, to, on tonight, which has been really good. And if, if you enjoyed um, what I did tonight, then I'll be on another night. Um, probably not tomorrow, but the, definitely the day after. So Wednesday night will be our next stream. Um, we may be streaming a little bit Rocket League a bit later, but for now, thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, then, you know, follow the channel and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to hear about. And yeah, I'm going to save the game here. Uh, Sporus Norbanus Canis. There we go. The Etruscans are no more. And I'll see you in the next part. See you later.